So this piece of equipment here is called a newtometer, and we can use this to look at the forces acting on objects. Now inside, it's pretty simple. We just have a spring, and when a force is applied, the spring extends, and the force is going to be directly proportional to the extension. Now if I was just to hang this up on a stand over here, if we had this 400 gram mass, so these are just some slotted masses, if I put this on the end, it's going to cause that spring to extend like so. Now at this point, we have something which is in equilibrium. There's no movement, and that means we have balanced forces. And here, the force acting down due to the weight of this mass is going to be equal in size, but in an opposite direction to the tension in that spring. So at the moment, in equilibrium, we can see we have a reading of four newtons. But what would happen if we were to maybe, instead of having the masses in the air, if we were to submerge those underwater? Well, what we could do is maybe predict what might happen and then use some of our current knowledge to explain that. So let's see what does actually happen. If I just put this carefully underneath and then I'm just going to lower this down, we can see at the moment we're at exactly four newtons of force. If I move this down, until it is fully submerged, we can see the reading here is now about 3.5 newtons. Now the weight of those masses has not changed, they are still in the gravitational field of the Earth, but the forces acting are slightly different. Now, we don't just have weight acting down and tension acting up, there's also another force called upthrust, sometimes called buoyancy, and this is due to the volume of fluid which this mass has displaced in that water. So now, although we've got the weight acting down, we have an upthrust acting up, and that means the tension in that spring is going to be smaller than it was before. I've now adjusted it slightly, and if we observe this, we can see that it is now only partially submerged. And that means there's going to be a lower volume of water which has been displaced, so the upthrust force is going to be lower. And actually, if we look at what we see on the reading over here, it's midway between the 4 newtons and the 3.5 newtons that we had earlier. So this is a nice way to demonstrate the effect of upthrust in the classroom. And you can get students to predict what might happen, to explain it with their current knowledge of physics, and then observe what actually happens in a demonstration, and then use their newfound physics knowledge to try and explain what's actually happening in this scenario.